Will that continue through this year? I, I hope that it continues through this year. I mean, we had uh, just an unbelievably strong year of strong economic growth, very low unemployment, and inflation that came down to where we actually want it to be. Uh, it really was just win, win, win. You know, every economy in every country and every year is always at risk of a recession. So, you know, anytime anyone's asked to guarantee that a recession won't come, um, you're just asking for trouble because you got to keep your eye on the ball. And I, you know, I was certainly pleased to hear Gene Sperling say, you know, you just don't know. And that's why they're just going to keep plugging away at it because we don't know what could happen next. But if things keep going on the way they have been going on, I think consumers will start to uh, recover their confidence to see, like, you know, look, we still have plenty of jobs. We still have money in the bank. Inflation's coming down and real wages have grown. The bottom line is families are better off today than they were in 2019, most of them. Well, and earlier today, Betsy, we heard from Secretary of the Treasury Janet Yellen speaking specifically about middle class uh, families and what the Biden administration has done to try to invest in them and better their economic circumstances. Just take a listen, if you will, to her speaking at the Economic Club of Chicago earlier. The story of the middle class is not separate from the state of the economy. It is at the heart of it. Overall, the Biden administration has put in place the most extensive set of policies and investments to benefit the middle class and grow the economy that our country has seen in my lifetime. But the thing about investments, Betsy, is that often they take a while to pay off. And certainly we are starting to see an uptick in sentiment. But how much of the policies that this administration has passed, surely Inflation Reduction Act, other efforts as well, have actually been realized and are now felt in, in pocketbooks? How much is there a lagged effect still to consider here? Well, there's obviously a lagged effect because uh, the money hasn't all been spent, the projects haven't all been done, but they're all getting started and they're creating strong economies tr in places where we have traditionally not had strong economies. So if you look at the money uh, from the Inflation Reduction Act, so much of it has gone to rural communities or communities that have tended not to do as well um, as as other communities. So there is a purposeful uh, push to strengthen all of America. You know, I think what the Biden administration is trying to do is point out that this myth we've been told for years that there are just a few job creators out there and we need to give them all sorts of tax cuts so we can convince them to keep creating jobs. That's a myth. What we need is a strong and vibrant economy that everybody can participate in. And coming out of COVID, we've really seen that. You heard Gene Sperling talking about supporting families with things like the child tax credit, with things like the support to unemployment insurance and the stimulus checks during uh, the pandemic. All of that left the typical household with more money in the bank than they had before. And what we have seen is the strongest rate of uh, of, cre of the business creation that we've seen in a very, very long time. I didn't think we could see such a surge in new business formation. So it turns out that the job creators are not just a tiny handful of people who need some big tax cuts. It was actually all of us who could decide at any moment to open a very small business, uh, perhaps have that business grow. I think it's been that kind of dynamism, the dynamism that's come from everyday Americans trying to meet the needs of other everyday Americans by starting new businesses yeah. that has led to an explosion of growth around the country. We're not done with that. And my hope is that people will continue to see and reap the, the rewards from that over the coming year. Betsy, you're joining us from Michigan, where economic conditions are going to play in directly uh, to the result of this presidential election. It's one reason why we talked to you. And, of course, the president was there for a very important endorsement uh, from the head of the UAW, Sean Fain. Let's hear from the president at that event before we ask you more about it. Here he is. I kept my commitment to be the most pro-union president ever. I'm proud you have my back. Let me just say I'm honored to have your back and you have mine. That's the deal. 
We saw Joe Biden walk the picket line as the president of the United States. So not a shock, I guess, to see this endorsement in return. I just wonder, what do the rank and file union members living in Michigan think about this, many of whom voted for Donald Trump in the last election? You know, I think that's the challenge, is that many of them do support Donald Trump. But at the end of the day, when it came time for them to strike, to get you know record contracts to reflect record, record profits was their motto, uh, Donald Trump was nowhere to be seen, and President Biden was walking the picket line. You know, it's the support of unions that that comes from society and and government that allowed that record contract. Uh, so it doesn't surprise me that he was able to get that endorsement. And the hope is that the endorsement starts conversations that allow those rank and file members who perhaps have been Trump supporters to ask questions about what Biden has actually done to improve their lot versus what they got uh, from a Trump presidency. You know, I, I don't think any single endorsement is going to, you know, get everybody on board. But it's obviously really important to show that there is uh, a strong union support for President Biden, and he is a strong union president.